One of the three keys to teaching science at home is to keep a record, because writing it down really does help us to remember what we have learned. But what does writing in science look like, and how should it progress through the years? Over the next two episodes, we're going to tackle these two questions. Hi, I'm Paige Hudson, author of the Programs of Elemental Science. You are listening to the Tips for Teaching Science at Home show, where we're breaking down the lofty concepts in science into building blocks you can use in your home. My field of expertise lies firmly in science. That said, I want to share with you all what I have learned about writing as it pertains to science in my 10 plus years of homeschooling, something I learned the hard way at the beginning of our journey. You see, I almost killed my daughter's love of science by expecting her to write beyond her abilities. I was like most newbies. I had a 12 year plan mapped out when our daughter was only four years old, and I stressed about making sure that we reach those milestones by that arbitrary age. So rather than gently transitioning from one type of writing into another, my expectation was that we could abruptly switch. And that plan went over like a lead balloon. Our daughter began to balk at doing science because of the writing expectations I had placed on her. So I backed down, and like a good scientist, I started researching for a better way. And I have gleaned much from the writings of Charlotte Mason, Susan Wise Bauer, and others. In our homeschool, we found a good balance between writing expectations and developing a passion for science. And now, I want to help you avoid this pitfall in teaching science. In this two-part series, I'm going to share what I have learned and how I now suggest you handle writing in science. I trust that this information will encourage you as you seek to teach science in your home. Let's dig in. During the elementary years, I believe that writing in science should go through three stages, oral, transition, and composition. The exact ages that the student reaches these stages will vary, but generally most students will move beyond these three stages by about fifth or sixth grade. The main thing you are looking for is consistent progress year after year. As we go through these three stages, I'll use the backdrop of notebooking, which is my favorite form of writing, to take a closer look at these phases. Notebooking is simply a way of recording a student's narration along with a picture to engage both sides of the brain. A narration is just a summary of what the student has learned. Basically, you will read a selection, ask the student a few questions about what they just read, and then you'll ask them to tell you what they've learned in a few sentences. These sentences are their narration, which is written down in their notebook or lap book by either you or by them. So let's look at the first stage, oral writing. During this stage, your students are learning the basic mechanics of writing. They are learning the physical act of how to form their letters, words, and sentences on paper in their language arts programs. For science, the student won't be doing any physical writing during this stage. Instead, the student will dictate their narration or summary to you after you have discussed the reading selection together, and then you will write down these few sentences for them on a notebooking page or in a mini book from a lap book. Then, the students can color the corresponding image if there is one, as you read their summary back to them. As they become more confident with forming letters, you can move them into stage two, which is transition. Students in the transition stage are learning the mechanics of spelling and grammar. They are learning how to properly write words and form sentences in their language arts programs. For science, the students will copy part or all of their narration into their notebook or lap book. You will read the selection, discuss it, and have them orally narrate their summary as before. And just like in stage one, you'll write it down for them. Only this time, you'll write it down on a separate sheet of paper. Then you will have the students copy it into their notebook or lap book. At the beginning, you will have them copy just a portion of that narration. But as their skills increase, you will have them copy more and more until they are able to copy the whole narration on their own. Once they are comfortable with this, you're ready to move into stage three which is composition. In the third stage, students are working on getting their thoughts on paper in a more cohesive manner. They are learning how to write a connected, multi-sentence summary on their own from what they've read in their language arts programs. For science, these students will begin writing their own narrations. You will still read the selection, discuss it, and have them orally narrate their summary. Then you will ask them to write down what they have learned in their notebook or lap book. 
In the beginning, you can expect them to write a sentence or two that may or may not be related, but as they become more comfortable with writing their own narrations, they will be able to write several sentences with what they have learned into their notebooks. Once they've reached this point, your students are ready to move into the next stage, which I'll share more about in our next episode. So as you take your students through these three stages, oral, transition, and composition, remember that you're emphasizing consistent progress year after year. As you build their skills in the mechanics of writing, you can use science to provide additional practice for those mastered skills. If you would like a more in-depth view of the progression of writing skills, I highly suggest you read the book The Complete Writer by Susan Wise Bauer. Be sure to come back for our next episode where we discuss writing and science during the middle school years and beyond. Thanks for listening to episode 12 of the Tips for Teaching Science at Home show. You can see today's show notes by clicking on the link below or by heading over to elementalscience.com, finding tips, and clicking on videos. If you're listening in iTunes or Stitcher, scroll on down and leave us a review. These reviews help others to find our tips for teaching science. If you're watching in YouTube or Facebook, leave us a comment and let us know how you handle writing for science in your home.